In this video, we're going to do an overview of the process of cellular respiration. So I got a couple pictures here. This is a little fishy, and we got a picture of a plant. And both of these organisms do cellular respiration. In fact, pretty much all living things do respiration. All living things need energy, and typically energy is in the form of ATP in living systems. And so all living things have to convert organic compounds like sugar, C6H12O6, to a usable form of energy, which is ATP. And so whether you're a fish or whether you're a plant, or even if you are a man-bear pig, all living things have to do cellular respiration. So most of respiration happens within the cellular organelle, the mitochondria, which we see here. And I want you to notice it has several parts. It has an outer membrane, uh, but it's also got an inner membrane, which we often call the cristae. And then it's got some fluid on the inside that we call the matrix. And so different parts of cellular respiration are going to occur in different parts of the mitochondria. So it's important we know those parts. So now let's look in depth at the actual process. Here is somewhat of an overview of the process of cellular respiration. It all starts with the molecule glucose. And of course, where did we get that glucose? Well, if I'm a plant, I got it from the chloroplast. So I've got my chloroplast, and that's where I got it from. If I am an animal, then I got it by eating something. So once I have my glucose, whether I'm a plant and I made it myself or whether an animal and I got it from eating something, I'm going to start in the cytoplasm and that's where I'm going to do the process of glycolysis. So here we have glycolysis and a few things are going to happen. I'm going to actually convert that glucose into two molecules of ATP, but if you recall we actually make four molecules of ATP but in order to power the process of glycolysis, I had to use up 2 ATP, and so that gives me a net gain of 2 ATP. And I'm going to get some NADH, which is carrying a couple of energized electrons. And I'm also going to get pyruvic acid. So if you recall, glucose is a 6-carbon molecule. So here we have a 6-carbon molecule, and the process of glycolysis actually breaks it into two 3-carbon molecules, and that's pyruvic acid. So I'm going to have two molecules of pyruvic acid created. So I got three things out. I got two ATP, I got two NADH, and then I got two molecules of pyruvic acid. Now the pyruvic acid um, is going to be converted to acetyl-CoA, and it's going to go to the Krebs cycle, which is in the matrix of the mitochondrion. And it's a biochemical pathway. All of these reactions are biochemical pathways, which means they have a series of steps. It's not just a one-step process. A product is made uh, from an enzyme, and then it's converted by another enzyme and another enzyme and so forth. And through the Krebs cycle, I'm going to get a few things out. I'm going to get two molecules of ATP. But I'm also going to produce some NADH, and I'm going to produce some FADH2. And so all of that NADH and that FADH2, and you, if you recall, they, those are just carrying electrons. They're carrying high-energy electrons. All of those electrons are going to wind up in the electron transport chain, which has a special enzyme called ATP synthase which is going to actually crank out a lot of ATP, between 28 and 34. On average, we're going to get between 36 and 38 ATP molecules from one molecule of glucose. And that electron transport chain happens in the cristae of the mitochondrion, so it happens in that inner membrane right there. So let's look at some of these processes in a little bit more depth. This is a diagram right here that shows us the inner membrane or the cristae 
inside the mitochondrion. And so this right here is the cristae. And remember, all membranes have two layers to them. They are a phospholipid bilayer. So there's one layer and there's another layer. And they have proteins embedded in them. And so we have this membrane and we have the electron transport chain, which is all of this right here. It's all of these proteins embedded. And they all have special names, but we don't really need to know them. We just need to understand the process. And then on the inside of that membrane, we have the matrix. And then on the outside of that membrane, we have what we call the intermembrane space. And so this is down in the mitochondrion. So let's look at what happens. The electrons come from NADH and FADH2. And they get passed off to special proteins. And like I said, they have special names, but we're not really concerned with it. When that happens, they are oxidized, and so they lose those electrons. So NADH is going to be converted to NAD+, and FADH2 gets converted to FAD. And those electrons go through the electron transport system and ultimately wind up with oxygen to create water and that's where water is given off so we talk about how in our formula for cellular respiration we start out with six molecules of oxygen and we start out with glucose C6H12O6 and that is converted into six molecules of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide comes from the Krebs cycle and six molecules of water. So the water that's given off actually comes by these electrons going through the electron transport chain and then winding up with oxygen uh, combining with some other things to become water. So as those electrons move through the system their energy is used by what we call a proton pump or hydrogen ion pumps and this is a form of active transport so it requires the use of energy and we pump these things into the intermembrane space so we're constantly pumping in hydrogen ions one after the other and we're using all that energy from those electrons to do that and what that does is that builds up a large amount of these hydrogen ions on this side of the membrane and all those hydrogen ions, by natural processes of diffusion and, and also by the fact that on this side of the membrane we now have this big positive charge and so overall we kind of have um, a negative on this side. And so the hydrogen ions have a tendency to flow back through and they can't just go through the membrane because they're polar, they're, they're ionic, they're ions, they have a charge. So they have to go through ATP synthase. And as they go through ATP synthase, it turns... Like, like water turning a water wheel, and the energy from it turning is used to take ADP and phosphorylate it into ATP. That's just a big word, meaning we're adding a phosphate. So again, as the electrons go through the transport chain, their energy is used to move hydrogen ions through the membrane, and then when those hydrogen ions flow back through ATP synthase, we call that process chemiosmosis, that energy is used to create ATP. Now let's very quickly relate this to photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, <clears throat> a very similar thing happens. Um, we have electron transport chains. But instead of it being the cristae, uh, this is the thylakoid membrane that the electrons, uh, excuse me, the, the proteins are embedded into. And the same thing happens as we move electrons through the system, as they move through those photosystems and that electron transport chain, that energy is used to pump hydrogen ions into the thylakoid. So we build up this concentration, a high concentration of hydrogen ions inside the thylakoid space, and then it goes through ATP synthase and that cranks out ATP for us, which goes to, of course, the Calvin cycle. So I want you to notice that these two processes are incredibly similar, both electron transport chain in a membrane. So ATP synthase itself, here's a picture of it, is an incredibly complex protein. If you look in here, just a little protein review, remember we talked about alpha helices and we talked about beta pleated sheets, primary, secondary, tertiary structure, quaternary structure of, of proteins. Um, this is the actual structure of ATP synthase. And so what actually happens is 
hydrogen ions flow through it and that causes uh, it to turn and as it turns it takes ADP and converts it into ATP and that particular process actually making ATP is called chemiosmosis